Hello! So this is a bit of a different kind of video. Recently I went to an interesting museum exhibition. The theme of the exhibition was also identities and how we are gonna have fluid identities or at least we're gonna, or we already are, let's say, changing our identities, moving in different spaces both in the real world and the digital world, online and in video games, we are assuming different forms, you could say. And yeah, they were trying to go a bit further than that by suggesting that we will essentially have totally different forms or identities, perhaps even in a sort of immortal sense, but that's of course debatable. And I was, I was thinking about that more and I came to that conclusion personally that it's already happening, it's already what is the case and has been the case since the beginning of humanity or you could say the human race, the human species. And that is of course the very popular saying we are all one, right? But that's really what it is. We are all, collectively speaking, one huge form of consciousness, right? And every identity, and I want to, of course I would tie it back to personality, every personality type or every identity, every person on this earth is like one aspect of that, let's say, big consciousness of the human mind, you could say. Every person at every point in time, in history, in the present day and in the future, is just another manifestation, it's just another aspect of identity, you could say. Every identity is just another, yeah, many people would say reincarnation of the same overall consciousness, just in different forms. And you as a person are part of this entire machination, you could say. You are part of that. You, your personality, your identity is just another expression of human consciousness. And I suppose that it's like very obvious in a way, but I find that even though it's so obvious, many people don't really think about it. And I'm bringing this up because a lot of people and a lot of my clients in particular, and also where I used to be, can struggle with accepting their identity, accepting their personality, who they are, right? Often feeling like I should not be how I am, I'm, I'm bad, I'm wrong, or something is wrong about me, I have to fix it. I want to be a different personality. Oftentimes people attempt to be different personalities and they think they are accepting themselves and they think they are proud of who they are but oftentimes they are proud of that identity they chose kind of like an avatar in a video game that you chose you chose that avatar and perhaps you even modified it to look like you kind of but you the true person is actually the player playing the avatar right you are not really the avatar yourself but many times we create this kind of avatar and try to be a different kind of personality, a different kind of person. It's kind of futile, right? Like I said, it's like the player thinking they are the avatar and living their life as if they were the avatar. But what would benefit them way more is if they accept who they are, like accept what they are. There is a purpose to all of us, I made a video about this before, there's a purpose to all of us having different personalities. We need all these different kinds of personalities and personality is just a certain aspect of who you are. It's a big aspect and that's why I often talk about it and it can be very helpful in realizing who you are, what you should focus on and what kinds of people mesh well with you personality wise. But your identity is not just your personality, it's also everything else, your entire life experience, your, your life skills, everything is coming together in who you are, right? And like I said, I focus on the personality aspect, but there's also other aspects you can focus on. So 
accepting all that, realizing all that, becoming aware of all that can be a difficult process, but it is necessary because only that way you will actually fulfill the purpose you have on this on this earth as a human being, being part of the, let's say, collective web or the social fabrics of who we are as a species, right? Everything we do, we are all interconnected. Even if, even if you think you are a loner, right? Everything you touch in the in your home, oh, okay, almost everything. But it's usually something that another human has created for you. So we are all connected. Even if you think you are alone, we are all <laughs> invariably connected to each other. So that's why it's so important. It's it's, I often say it's both an obligation to yourself and to humanity, who we are, right? To really fulfill who we are truly, right? Our personality, our identity. And of course it's fun to play out and find our different identities and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we always should come back to the real player, right? The real person who is on at the controls and you have to realize you have to make sure that you are actually the person controlling your life and not something else and you have way more control over it than you think whenever you blame something outside of yourself you are giving up any kind of responsibility any kind of control you may have and a lot of people do that because to be fair <laughs> to be honest uh, there are certain kinds of Enneagram personalities, certain kinds of personalities, kinds of people who are more inclined to do that. A lot of unhealthy type 6 ness, like fix or wing or main type in the Enneagram, can have an influence here. Also, some unhealthy nines in the Enneagram. And yeah, I mean, to be fair, like technically every personality type can get into this victim mentality, also type fours. So a lot of them in the Jungian sense, a lot of them are quote unquote feeling or ethical types. And funny enough, also a lot of uh, introvert thinking types, ISTP, INTP can get stuck in that easily as well. When you just give up, uh, all responsibility to a higher power which actually the higher power it, if it benefits you that's fine but if you think everything is malevolent and everything is ruined then you will never amount to anything really and I know there is this seemingly this dichotomy between self-acceptance and changing yourself or personal growth right and it can be a delicate balance. <sighs> so, ironically, first you have to accept where you are right now. And I know usually we quote unquote hate our identity or hate our personality or want to be another personality or another identity because we are doing something wrong with our identity or personality. We are not using it in a proper way. And of course, I'm not, I'm not denouncing that, uh, that um, your environment and your upbringing didn't have a role. It had a huge role, by the way. Usually when it starts out with the people in our lives, usually family members in the beginning, or maybe even just people at school or just kind of people you were growing up around and if they gave you a feeling of something that was wrong about you then naturally you will internalize it and you will create this inner critical voice which will constantly talk down on you and say you are wrong, something is wrong about you, you suck, you know, all these things. And you think it is your voice, but in actuality it's someone else's voice, or it's like a conglomeration of all those people's voices in one. So you have to kind of get rid of that voice, you have to question that voice, you have to ignore that voice, you have to go against it. So that's part of the self-acceptance. 
And so that's one aspect of it. If you have a certain kind of upbringing and you're still kind of dealing with that. And then the other aspect is, like I said, that you are just not utilizing who you are. You are not yeah, bringing out the best in yourself. You're not moving towards a better trajectory. You are probably kind of stuck in some area. You probably are not fulfilling your baseline let's say desires or even just needs that you have as human and oftentimes I go back to the human instincts right from Enneagram social sexual self-preservation so usually people lack in either one or two of these instincts or even all of them and then they feel very unfulfilled or and or they they just go about it and trying to fulfill those instincts or needs in a way that is not in harmony with their real personality and their identity. So the problem is not, okay, maybe that's like a bit too drastic or controversial, but I would say the problem is never really your identity or personality, because like I said, we are all connected, we are all aspects of human consciousness, and because we exist in this reality, we all have, you could say, a quote unquote birthright, or just we all are supposed to be here in some way, in some shape or form. So that alone shows you that it's not your identity or personality that's, not, that's the problem. Of course, there are situations where your identity or personality is not well suited to what's going on or not well suited to the environment but when you're if you're watching this video like you're watching this video right now you having wi-fi you being pretty smart i would guess you being able to speak and understand english you have just the fact you're watching this pretty much gives me a good indicator that you have the power to find an environment and find people and modify your life in such a way that it benefits you, it benefits your personality, it makes you feel more fulfilled. Yeah, <laughs> that's really it. Uh, and in a way that you can accept yourself. And here's the thing with change. So you accept where you are, you accept who you are right now, and you have to accept even if you, let's quote unquote, suck right now, even objectively speaking, right? Not subjectively, like I said, where people told you you suck and it's just because they have their own issues, but if actually objectively speaking, you suck in the sense that you are not fulfilling your instinctual needs properly and you are not really embracing your personality, that's when the change can happen and should happen for you to feel fulfilled and to be happy. And this kind of change it is a change, it's like, a, like I said, it's like an evolution, right? It's like a type of evolution. But it's like I'm always like thinking of Pokemon. It's, you know, like the, of course, the Pokemon changed, right? But it had like very specific evolutionary stages and it didn't change into something that it never could be, right? Like with a Pokemon, you know, okay, it has, it, it can change at this level and it will change into this kind of thing. We humans, uh, all of us, are not aware of at which level we are going to change and the exact form we are going to take on. But yeah, actually, personality type, Enneagram especially, but also to some extent, Jungian type can give you an overview of the kind of form you can like evolve into. In Enneagram, it's like the health or growth levels. In Jungian type, I would say it's like when I say light side, the light side of your strongest cognitive functions, usually your first and second function, and sometimes in socionics called demonstrative. So once you go into that, that's you when you read those aspects, or when I tell you about those aspects in a typing or coaching session, then you know, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be. This is my evolved stage or state. And then of course the question is, how do I get there? And for that, I usually say it's related to your instincts and it's related to your lifestyle. But for that, to go more in depth and be personalized about it, I would recommend you to 
fill out one of my forms and get typed by me, get coached by me, and then we can figure it out together. Or you might do it on your own if you want, but it could take you longer. So yeah, okay. I don't wanna make this video too long. I've been rambling a lot. Let me know if you like this form of video or not. But yeah, okay, let me know. Okay, have a good day, bye.